Okay, continuing the build, we're doing soft trim and furnishings. These are the roof sound deadening uh, kit or the roof sound felting pad. I've already got some some Dynax already up there, um, which uh, was already glued in place when they painted the car. It's thin enough for this to go over it, so we're just going to go um, high temp two part epoxy. I say two part epoxy. It's the it's not two part epoxy, just your normal Evo stick type glue, but it's uh, rated for the roof. It's more industrial grade stuff, so if your roof gets hot, it doesn't break the glue down. So I'm trying to think what it's called now, but it's like Evo stick anyway. So we're going to find out which sound pad goes where and get them back in place. Also, the bulkhead sound deadening panels are going in. We're just digging them out of stores and hooking them into position into the uh, bulkhead area. Radio speakers now secured. So that's going to be blasting out some good sound. Okay. And just then the heater ducting there, which we start to get together and then start placing all that heater ducting in. We do all this first before well well before the dash goes in obviously not be able to get into an, uh, to anything so we'll get them heater ducts in we're going to seal them heater ducts up with some aluminium tape so we don't get any air losses because they do suffer from air losses between the joints of the heater ducting but before we do that we'll just finalize all the sound deadening pads one bulkhead sound deadening pad for the driver's side that's cracked and damaged so we have to do a repair on it i just want it to look neat so we're going to do that repair on that one and then carry on fitting out the interior for now but leaving it all blank because the headlining guy needs to get in so I don't want to have anything that's in his way then I can start fitting out on the engine bay next keep it on going building up Project Ruby let's keep going okay just refurbing these bulkhead soundproofing panels this one that we had here it all cracked up like this look at that mess all snapping and crumbling away as I tried to fit it left hand side one's okay this one's no good so uh, scrape off all the old uh, material off the back of it using this plastic keeping the original plastic template which has survived that's the sort of frontage bit and then we just re stick on glue on some new sound deadening material this is a rubber backed soundproofing material which we now evo stick on to the back of this to uh, neaten that panel up a little bit because this didn't fancy that all crumbling away as I was trying to fit it into the car so continuing on with uh, soundproofing in the car okay sound pad neatly repaired a little cut line there to follow the contour just so you can follow the shapes so a slit line there double sided glue on the, uh, the Evo stick and that pad's now fixed with a nice new backing piece to it so we can fit that into the car now Okay, so bulkhead sound pads in place there. I've made a nice uh, masking uh, duct tape join there just to join that left hand pad with the right hand pad and going across. And up into the bulkhead, we've got these sound deadening pads fitted. They're all important here. This one was cracked at the top, so we've just got a little bit of tiger seal holding that top piece in. I think there's a tang missing there, so we've just got some duct tape to hold it in place. But it's, it's nicely up there and it's important to have this soundproofing if you want a quiet car of course it really 90% of your noise comes through the bulkhead so we get that fitted and it's all in looking good so I'm going to start the plastic heater ducting soon because they come across here then we're, we're talking about fitting the steering column what I'm going to do also we're missing a sound pad for here it's a difficult one because you've got to cut out every bulkhead hole there so it's hard to make so we're going to use uh, some um, pads for that some self-adhesive pads and cut that out not use the the foam or the the fibre uh, sound deadening material, the, the underlay if you will simply it's very difficult to cut out those kind of circular holes in that material we do have some sound deadening, some dynamat on the roll so that area will be dynamited we'll mark it out, cut it and then adhesive it on and then overcut the holes here because you've got to have plenty of room to get your nuts and bolts in and your grommets, your bulkhead grommets and of course your wiring harness multi plugs there so a little bit of a tricky one that top one that's a job for the dynamat to do the rest are done 
okay so we can start moving backwards with sound pads to do for for here these are just simple squares of uh, felt dead easy to do it's not a big deal with them what you've got to be careful of when you're doing this not go too thick in some of the areas because your center consoles and stuff struggle to fit back on you sort of fighting against all the foam that you've fitted so you've just got to pick your places where you can get away with it also where your seats fit as well and um, you've got to be careful you leave holes out for the seat mounting legs and bolts um, so it's a bit of trial and error when you're doing customised uh, sound pads these ones here because the factory they're straight in but when you move back and I'll be doing some a kit that I got from Coverdale most likely won't have all the necessary cutouts so we'll be working on those moving on then uh, heater ducting and a bit of dynamite to cut for the top let's go okay heater distribution box that's the heat to the your feet to the floor and then your demisting vents that's next just a little captive uh, one of those slide oh what the hell are they call these little slidey things and an eight mil head type uh, bolt uh, not a not a nut and bolt this is just a a threaded uh, let's get it so you can see one of the things you forget about going into there bringing you in the reason I'm showing you this detail is if you're rebuilding okay so I'm gonna bolt this up you gotta watch that seal round there even though I've got a new seal on it the um, plastic distribution box has got slight distortion on the, the gasket face so a little bit of sealant on for extra measure it'll still come off because it'll leave the gasket attached to the bulkhead so a little bit of sealant on there because that's an important one you don't want any air coming in through that that would make drafts and you'd lose some power through your heaters so a nice tight air sight seal around that distribution box there for you just checking the seals good bulkhead side and I can see that my sealants helped there would have been a few little distortion gaps in there and that sealants just seeped out to where it needs to go making a good airtight seal in the bulkhead as well okay on my lap is a demister outlet nozzle and I'm just putting on some duct, uh, silver ducting it's a very thin silverized uh, non-melting um, tape to seal possible air leaks around there you can just see that you do get a little bit of pressure loss it just helps with the heating system so wrapping that round around we go just uh, over that joint that's all it is it doesn't melt when it gets hot if you put insulation tape around there not a good idea It'll, the glue will go this uh, can stand the heat coming out of the ducts okay so continuing to help people build in theirs if they've forgotten where things go look at that little locating strip on the demister nozzle and that slots up into that top dash panel that just engages there like that that slot goes on and you've got two Phillips head screws you have to at the same time slot on this end and we will be putting the silver duct tape on that end as well then it's just secured with two Phillips screws I'm not sure if they had washers on or not I think they did okay next up guys is the fresh air distribution manifold that's hold on let's get this uh, torch positioned that's this one fresh air distribution going right into the bulkhead and comes up just up there okay and that comes out right over we go that comes out just there that's fresh air through these scuttles via the heater straight to your face vents so we want the face vents next they're fitting up through the top of the dashboard and we have two of those there we've put the silver foil on that joint and that joint so we're getting good to go there and the heater box is in incidentally um, when everything was tightened up in straight away there was a, a creak coming from this so when you flexed it under torsion or force not really much torsion but just sideways movement we were getting a rattle not a rattle a plastic on metal creak and this has two locating tabs at the back when you slot it in they require um, little sponge bushes in them 
or you can use a little dab of grease and it just stops this from when it's any flex would create an annoying plastic creaking sound so I stop that just by getting in at the sides here up into where those uh, locating tabs are for the heater distribution box so that's something to watch out for when you're building get everything tight everything neat and everything fitting together and then test it start pulling on stuff and moving it trying to find any squeaks that's what I do that's what I like to do so that you've got a nice quiet car when you when you're cruising down that motorway in Italy with your velvet jacket on looking cool in the car are you cool in your Cortina? Do you want a Cortina? Yeah. Are you watching Cozy at Home on YouTube? We're doing good. I hope you're enjoying the film so far. So I just calm down a little bit. I was rushing a bit before. Uh, well, I say rushing. I was just eager to know what to fit and where to start fitting stuff. It's always hard to know where to start. But we've got to get all this bulkhead done. Because all these items here, they go on first. It's almost... The reverse of when we stripped it so for me now the fresh air vent manifolds let's get them fitted in there and then that's all the heater ducting done here we are stepped back a little bit and you can see it's starting to take shape and build up now all right little back view there for you keeping you in the frame trying to keep the camera work steady trying to give you as much info as well lit as I can wary of lighting you see those speakers in the middle there, they're rock solid. Now hopefully there's enough clearance for the radio, there should be. I think the radio just goes below that bump. You can see just below the speakers where the sound padded is. You'll see that mastic as well just seeping out of the heater distribution box making a nice airtight fit. So air, my air distribution system going in, that's that today's objective. Also up ahead on the roof we've got glued in now our sound matting just with Evo stick out of a spray can and that worked well so fresh air vents please let's get those okay in my hand is the driver's side fresh air duct before we put it in we just go around with a silver tape here just to close up any potential air gaps in that as we've done on the others silver that first Okay, come on in, let's have a look. Hey, it's not good if you've got a bad back this job. Oh, I'm not too bad. I'm quite flexible. In fact, I'm, I'm double jointed or hypermobile, as they say. I thought that was a grease. Okay, we're in. We're inside. Have a little look, have a little look. So, we're testing for rattles, boops, bangs, scratches. And... Uh, we ain't got any, so we're good there. So I'm just, I'm just finally uh, fitting out this. That's the last of the ducting in. They're secured at the top there on the dash. So what does that leave us to do? Well, on the heaters, I don't think it leaves anything. We can move on to the next step of doing this uh, dash fit out. Soundproofing's in. Ducting's all taped up. You might think well, that's not quite an original finish. Look at that silver tape. Using silver because it doesn't melt and slide off. But they have little air leaks just at the sides of the tubing as I explained. And whilst it's not a lot, it does lose a little bit. Okay, so some extra uh, bolt and braces stuff there. You know about that uh, distribution box. Nicely fitted and we've stopped that plastic creak that we were getting by just greasing the uh, pivot point of the heater box distribution box sits in at the back of the bulkhead there's two little tangs it rests on them and as it moves it makes that uh, that's kind of like creaking sound like staircase creaking we don't want that 
So, next job for me is, do you know what? I'm thinking what, what the next job is. Whilst I pause and have a thought, you go and have a tea, you're in 38, we're moving fast, and do you know, we could actually be running out of uh, time, because I don't want to keep these films too long, and I reckon I've already got 50 minutes worth of footage here. So 38, as we promised, showed you the shell, and it begins now the rebuild. Um, how many videos will it take before the car's back together? I don't know, it depends how detailed I go and how, how detailed you want me to go. Uh, I'm stuck between two uh, places because some people they want um, fast frills, fun and action, which is good, I understand. Others want detailed work on how all this uh, goes together because obviously it's, it's online reference material. So, so many times you've stripped your car, though I, I did anyway in the early days, and you forget where everything goes. There's nothing better than a video to. Uh, to show you. I'm hoping that uh, I'm 90% right in uh, in what we do here. And I hate to put the video up and show people uh, the wrong way. Um, it's not concourse the car as you know there's slight modifications on it so feel free to do your concourse stuff but I like to get this job out of the way and done neat tidy and running. There's two little rubber buns I've just reminded myself to go here for the dashboard tiny little rubber cones that fit in the corners of the dashboard again it's probably to stop creaking sounds um, and then we can start uh, moving on to other jobs I might do the handbrake release cable next we'll see have you have you drink have you tea have a pause have a break there's maybe another 15 minutes to go before uh, we wrap for 39 it'll be fine in part of 39 we'll see you in a bit Continuing on into 38 with pedal box now fitted and steering column fitted. Um, just when I was fitting the ducting, I forgot to mention this last ducting on the driver's side. You just don't fit that because you've got the support bracket for the steering column. Okay, that's with two bolts into the bulkhead, one there and one just just in the middle of your screen now there. So you can't get to that bolt when that heater ducting's in, so heater ducting back off. This bracket on, that support bracket for the steering column, pedal box in, putting the pedal box through the bulkhead, loosely bolting it on without the servo one, just bolting it loosely to the bulkhead, um, then <clears throat> offer up your steering shaft, and the grommet on the bottom of the steering shaft, put some oil on it, I use this penetrating oil here, okay, and fit the grommet first, there's the grommet, just touching it with my finger now, pull that light so it exposes for you better. Fit the grommet first into the bulkhead and then slide the shaft into the grommet. Don't try and fit the steering column with the grommet on because it won't quite uh, engage. It might do if you whack it, but it's easier if you lube that up. Grommet on into the bulkhead first, slide the shaft in. Have all these just loose, these bolts here just nipped up. And then you might have to just tap the steering shaft and pull back on the bracket a little bit, depending on powder coating, changing the tolerances a little bit. And then three bolts holding the steering column into the steering column support bracket. One, two, and then one further down just underneath. And that's, they can then be nipped up. And then you can slot the ventilator, uh, fresh air vent back on. And then, because that's now tight there. So stepping back a little bit so it's a bit clearer for you to see. Pedal box, steering column bracket, steering column itself, shaft into the bulkhead and then the fresh air vent on last. So that's where we're up to. Okay, uh, I'm going to move, keep on moving now, trying to think what to do next. But uh, that definitely completes the heater duct. And I've done the uh, handbrake release cable as well, that's now fitted and operational, I'll take you around to that. Up and round the bay we go. Just the usual spring, you've got to feed that spring in. It's a little bit tricky, you don't want to be scratching any paint, but you feed it through the front of the car. And there's a bit of a, a Houdini thing where you get it to go and then it should land about there. If it doesn't land about there, your spring's probably bent. You can bend them to shape, but it should give you a full movement when you pull the handle. That's got a wash on it, shouldn't have a wash, I'll take that off, 10mm bolt holding it on, spring 
assembly. Then the cable clamps on a cable clamp here, which has two little locating lugs and the cable clamp. It's got a 10 mil captive in it. Uh, I say 10 mil, it's a 10 mil head, but it's not a 10 mil thread. You know that from before. That clamps the cable. Cable then goes round underneath the wing, wing rail. Two clips clipping on, holding it in place. Also got the headlamp relay on there. Washer bottle being mocked up. Then it goes round into the bulkhead. So that's the steering uh, steering column in. Bonnet release pull on. Dash top starting to look the part. These vents are coming up through there. We refurbed the vents as well, painted them because you do see them through the screen. So they got painted, they're a little faded. So they've been blacked up. And that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm just trying to get everything that's buried at the back done. I might have to start mocking up the cruise control pump because that's buried as well there and that fits just in here. That's the, the bellows. They're not noisy, the bellows, so it's okay to have them there. The pump's noisy, that's at the back in the banish to the uh, the boot floor area and it'll be well soundproofed. So we are getting into a position where we could accept the dashboard faster than I thought, I must admit. Some carpet mock-up and some extra soundproofing to go down we need to be looking at that as well but so far there's more room than I remember oh accelerator pedal next sorry accelerator pedal box to go on I'll go and get that now so I'm going to do the accelerator pedal next so all bulkhead area so far guys just doing the um, the gaskets now for the door striker plates these like to sit on there's the original Ford one they put these on later on on the cars to help with uh, the uh, doors being a quite a shut. They're actually advertised uh, in a Ford brochure I've got as being part of a smoother, quieter door closing operation. Something to do with vibration or the foot. They also work as a great way of protecting your paint when you put your striker plate on. So using the medium thickness rims uh, gasket there, or rinds, rinds, gasket paper, good stuff. Uh, sketch out hole punch through so we just used a hole punch there and made those templates for our, our striker plates that we've rebuilt so they'll go on the car so just a little quick uh, tip on that one and then our galvanized zinc passivated screws there for the catch striker plate catch all ready to go another little detail on the car rivets out and uh, relined it just getting the drill bit for this slot make sure we can get that slot diameter right off the old backing board there uh, straight onto there get them slots right OCD now Okay, continuing on with making the, the backing board, this goes just behind the seat. Uh, my one was a bit warped, mainly warped, also scratched, so we make a brand new one with hardboard, template, jigsaw, a few little bits. I, I did all the ideas. What we're going to do today Texture is better. Right? 
Chet Sun China Company. You can hear the polishing machine going upstairs. I just buy these for like 15 quid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some old witch trimming. Just see one on eBay, on $7.99. These aren't my hands, they're Ricky's hands. I'm not that neat. I'm not I'm not that neat, no way. We've got OCD Ricky on the job here. Okay, you newly built, nicely built sound card going in. All the felt trimmings, all the felt trimmings on there. Evo stick arm. We've got these flexible units. This is scored along here, so we used uh, gaffer tape just to help it as well. You can see the score line there. Uh, it's, it's got um, a vinyl on the front facing it off, but just as it flexes there, I didn't want it to actually try and break off. So it's all done and ready to go in. Nice. Uh, Seat back in car going in. I'm gonna see top of my head, my hands. And Happy to see you now. I'll start yeah. it again there. Okay, so tank in. What's fun on your back? Um, tank straps on. Already galvanised because you've done all your kit, you've done all your homework, and you've had it all ready for when your shell's done. Slot your two straps in. The longer strap goes on the right hand <laughs> side. If you're looking at it from my angle here, shorter tank strap on the left. Hook them in at the inner valance, the, the hook and twist in, drop both tank straps down. Petal tank on your chest, slide it backwards into the uh, spout hole. Then have your uh, hanger bolts ready, 213mm heads. The hanger hooks at the moment, I've got the claw going in that way. It could be that the claw comes in the other way and the bolt needs to push back. We'll see about that in a minute. Okay, we'll go to the filler spout now. Okay, so we'll cut there. If your filler neck isn't quite straight, broom handle and just bend the neck a little bit. You can just you can just straighten or move twist the neck so you get it central or con concentric to the opening. So a broom handle in, don't be shy, and it'll just move once you've got the tank really tightly, well not really tightly, but nicely firmly secured under on the straps. Just put the uh, broom handle in here, and you can just manoeuvre that just in exactly the right place. And then that finish with a nice locking petrol cap. Anti clockwise to open, and you, you're cooking. So that's it, we're on with that. Let's move on to something else. going to do wax oil in using ML 
Dinatrol ML. It should do a very fine miss and it looks like it has been doing so. Come over to the car. Let's get this bad boy a pop in there. Where's my pressurised gun? This is what I like to use because you get a really good jet coming out. Very fine circular fan like uh, motion coming out the end of this particular nozzle. There's a few different nozzles you can use. This gun has a quick release so you can swap nozzles depending on what you're doing. This one's good for just getting in where you've got holes. So it's primed and ready. I've done a little bit. Rick's going to go round to the uh, driver's side. You should see it misting out between the seam of the inner wing. Let's go on there and have a go. We're locked and loaded. It's going to probably come out between these seams. This is, this is how it works because this stuff creeps in the seams. You see that there? Look at that. See it? Okay. And there. So we're done there. And this way. That's come out like a fan. I can probably demo it to you. Here. Yeah. Nice, fine mist. Got the pressurised gun. You don't get that as good with the suction, the Venturi types, the just the Schutz type guns. Pressurised vessel a lot better. Did it on Swampy and uh, stood the test of time. So I've done the inner wings here now. Just I've done the valance panel as well. So pretty much good to go. You see the mist there. Don't need too much. Oh, it starts to creep out the seams. Here, look. That's what you want. Gets right between the seams. Have a cloth ready. To wipe it. And then, I've got some panel wipes. Keep getting a clean one. Don't reuse it because you're going to be picking up contaminants. So just keeping the, uh, the worst of it off. I'll get the rest later. That's that's working well. So we're going to continue on. We're going to go down the chassis leg now with a longer tube. So wax oil in ruby. Here we go. Plenty on. Find all the places we can get to with this and the other attachments. That's ML spec uh, cavity wax by Dinatrol, and I'm using a Sealy pressurised gun with uh, various different lance attachments, and we're going to be doing the whole lot of the car, all the cavity sections. This is good for cavities. It creeps into the, the panel joins. So off we go. Let's do some more. Mm. We've done it, might not creep that one. Certainly getting it there on that A pillar. This is an important place to do the A pillar. See it misting out the bottom just a little bit. When you do the sills, you're going to see quite a lot. I think that's a good place to do as well, that jacking point. We might kick back here. Yeah, kick back. It's got the jacking point because they collect behind the back. Getting me rough cloth just to get the spills off the floor and then the panel wipes to take it off the body. Very wary of the paint situation. So I'm going to go along the uh, inner sills now. Then I'll do the box section run later with the long tube. So really we'll do a few. Probably one of the most important areas you can do is under the scuttle. Let's hit it. go don't worry that it runs that's the whole point that's what you want this will wipe off later so i've done that scuttle because the scuttle's the worst now we're going to do this side rick's going to swap the camera around i'm just going to get the lance lined up i'm wary of whoops i'm wary of scratching the paint feed that in so it hits the dead end It coming out of all sorts of places now. We get to get ready to catch it because it's going to run. Right now we mop up. It's very thin stuff.
just need a few blasts really, it's that good coverage, this stuff. And it's getting into every seam, it's coming out of all sorts of weird seams I've never seen before. Crazy stuff. Mill, ML. It's just really going to do it, that. So that's that whole inner A pillar done. And you see it's it's dribbling out between the gaps, so we'll go for the inner sills as well next. So keep with us uh, everybody, because this is working really well. So I'm going for the inner sills now. So that's that in. I can only get so far up the front. I'm still on the first litre that I'm poured in. That's my end point there. But we'll use a camera later to see we've got everywhere. Squeeze the sugar, the good to go. You can even see it kicking upwards through those seams. Oh yeah. Oh that's nice. Oh yeah. that section done but we'll just keep moving back we'll try and quarter the car up this is sections and move backwards so you, otherwise you can forget where you've been Beat pillar up to the top. Let's draw it now. We wipe up after. So we've got the B pillar bottom as well, and it's nicely coming out of the seam. We're working our way on the sills as we go along. And we get the camera in later and just make sure we've got everywhere once it's dried a little bit. I don't think we can get through that one. Can I get these from the end outside now? Okay, Rick. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's that pressurised gun. It's a little bit quieter now, it was a bit hectic before. So, pressurised vessel there, just fill it up with the ML. And here's another close up for you for this product to the Dinatrol ML. Super penetrating corrosion prevention stops existing rust. Finished in brown. Into the pressurised gun. And I've built an extension piece, that's the advantage of having the pressurised gun is that you can get a long, longer lance. So that enables us to get right through. We're just going at the moment on the chassis forks, and they're very vulnerable on Cortinas. So this one will be getting adequate protection. So a big advantage there by using uh, this system to get right into the chassis forks. So off we go uh, to do the final um, runs of the uh, wax oiling or dinner troll rust prevention procedure. Off we go. Right, you're going to see with this tube that I'm coming into the chassis. It fits nicely through that hole at the back of that drain hole in the end of the fork. And it takes me all the way, right the way up. To that end and I can meet that end from the engine bay so you can do your entire chassis fork from outside of the car no need to take carpets out if you're doing this at home and you don't want to strip your car interior because you can get to the chassis from the inside as well but that means pulling out the floor bungs this tube will get you exactly what you need it's perfect for the job and make sure 
you want the pressurised lance, you won't be able to do it. So, watch this. I go like that, and then I'm going to start pulling. I can't film it. Got to put some cloth down to catch the inevitable. But out of each chassis hole, out of each chassis hole, there it is. Taking you along. So we've hit the target. We can now confidently say that a full chassis run has got the uh, cavity protection wax inside it. All we've got to do now is swap across to the other side of the car. That only leaves the rear inner valance to do, and the wax oiling procedure's been done at this stage anyway. There is another type of wax which is a bit more solid than this one and that's for putting in areas where it's outside. But for now the ML does what we need, keeps the wool from the door. And we've only got to do the inside rear valance which we'll switch lances for and we're going to be going for a different type. Okay we'll go for the little, the mi little mini flexi lance that we used earlier on in the sills. If we wanted to, we can also go into the sills with this blue tube and do a complete sill run through this inspection hole here, which we've used, which we made when we did the restore. That's also handy for when our interior is in and we want to top up the wax oil. No need to go through the access holes on the inside. Incidentally, we're ready to tape those up now um, because we're, we're going to use them just to shine the torch through to see that we've got cover but after that we tape up those side inspection holes here they are coming round for the side inspection holes we're going to go looking through there later and then we put the, the silver tape over them and they're done or we can use uh, gaffer tape or duct tape it doesn't really matter on those the factory used both here's an example of some um, of the ML into some of the seams how it's come out and inside the B pillar we are fully ML'd and it goes a little bit hard, it doesn't stay liquid all the time which is a good thing, I think once the, the liquid reaches the air then um, it begins to, to harden up which is great so I'm quite pleased with the product this didn't need heating up, it's very liquid as it is that's at 18 degrees at the moment, that tin ok so it's alright at 18 I measured the temperature uh, with a little laser measure and it, it's set at 18 so you can put this on reasonably cool. The other dinner troll stuff that I used on Swampy required a bit more heating. This seems to be slightly better. I believe there's a couple of different variants. If you go onto Dinner Troll's website, it explains the different variants. I picked ML because of the, it's, it's creeping um, between the panel capacity okay so I'm gonna put this blue tube now into the other chassis leg then we're gonna tackle the rear inner valance area that's very vulnerable let's get that done that's all the way to the end now so I'm gonna squeeze and withdraw the tube Pull that procedure now. Nearly at the end. There we go, we're done for that. Okay, we're going for wiper motor install now, just because it's the first thing in the engine bay to go in, to keep it out of the way because it fits right at the back of everything else. So we've got our refurbed kit, which you saw in the early video. So fully refurbed wiper motor in its park position, ready to go. So if you look at those bars, the arrangement you can see with the longer bar on top, is the way that you feed the mechanism in. I'll take you up uh, to the place where it's going. You'll see it's wax oiled now. Don't worry about the spatters of wax oil because 
which behind the canopy we could wipe them down but we're, uh, we're nicely wax oiled in the scuttle area so we now it can receive the wiper motor we're going to feed it very carefully in um, I'm confident I can do it, I'll just put that little piece of uh, cloth down and then we'll feed that in wiper motor going in guys okay we've got to fix in screw through the spindle at the top and one bolt just holding in that bracket at the moment you'll see what we have to fit here we've got a little white washer there with a recess that fits in to the uh, scuttle and then a nice galvanized larger washer than the nut on the end so what I do now I go underneath there's a little triangle shape you can just see it here if I can get you in there's a little triangle I'm going to get the torch to make it a bit better hold on let's light this up okay you see that little triangle there on the spindle that just fits you rotate that because there's a triangular recess in the scuttle panel so watch out you don't try and bolt that up without that seated properly so twist a triangle round till you feel it pull into the scuttle recess a little triangle stamped out into the scuttle recess that stops that from spinning freewheeling itself round it's a locking locking shape so I'm going to feed that up there now and put the uh, washer and nut on and then that's the two spindles done we'll get another fixing on the motor base itself here we go just make sure you got your, your uh, cams in the right place on the back of the motor on the gearbox output shaft should be coming to your left if you're standing from the front parking to your, hang on, I'll tell you where it parks get me hand behind the back have a few which way we're parking, yeah pointing to pointing to the excuse me, pointing to the left what I do, I stick a, an earth onto the earth tag here or the one that's fitted up there depending on the motor you've got two different uh, configurations hook a wire into the slow winding pop uh, your positive onto that whoops get that again I'm trying not to short across to the, the air terminal the wire is slightly in the tension from the transformer and then cross to the switch tab and there's just touch on what happens now I'll simulate the switch Cross the continuous running on that slow speed, then the switch would go back, hit that tab, and it parks. So, looking at the action, park in there, park, park. So they're parking in the right place, and the the uh, sweep angle, sweep uh, things right. It's all basically doing what it should so I'll nip these bolts up now 22 mil 22 mil and then we can start boxing in with the uh, the bulkhead closing panel there and we've got some new nuts and bolts to fit it up I was struggling for good uh, quality head bolts out of the swampy out of the the ruby kit so let's get them bolts in now and now uh, close that up and out of stores come all those pre-prepared parts that you've seen in the previous episodes we haven't seen the heater box for a while it's going to look nice let's offer the heater box up i've got some caulking strip as well some foam pads to seal it to the bulkhead so let's unwrap this now and we must love these unboxing videos a million hits for your unboxing video Ooh. Mm. Mm, Jim. Mm. it's like a present to yourself you wrapped it and sent it to the future. Wow, I sent this to the future. It's arrived. Oh, look at the finish. The slate on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, get that in. Mmm. Present to the future. Heater box going in. Del and air. Okay, heater box gaskets going on. I just used some of that caulking, look. And that gives you an extra seal. Also, it doesn't stick this too hard. To the bulkhead same on that side so they should be good to fit the heater on we'll check when it sits on notice that's a little bit more more raised than that side this is a thinner type gasket new old one we'll just see how that fits i'll put a cork on the face of that side just to marry up with it so let's see how it goes
Okay, <clears throat> so you got, we've got a, we've got a wiper motor just here, bulkhead okay, closing panels, the heater box, the cuddly toy. What you got to do, the heater box and the wiper motor, all of this area here, it's an enclosed area, the only air intakes on the grill at the top, you don't want engine fumes coming in. These are notorious for bad seals at the back and on these inlet apertures here. So we've got the cork, the rubber seal, the cork and the rubber seal fit to bed on nicely. We've got foam padding between all these closing panels so we can tuck the airtight there. So this system's nice and fresh air and you're not going to get any engine fumes or noise indeed coming through because you'd be surprised that noise can travel through into this system and into the car. So we're done there, we're nipped up and we're ready to move on to something else. Let's go. Just fitting the heater matrix now, some waterproof foam padding, some little bit of copper slip because it's a very snug fit this. A couple of mil foam pads was initially tight, I didn't want to damage the heater box so just, it is a nice smooth fit into there so that just goes in like this very very nice and snug very airtight so you get maximum flow then we're, we're all the way in then we put our cover on and that's the heater matrix done very very good fit so maximum air will pass right through the the matrix there you know I have a foam pad on those but they always break down this stuff I've put on is pretty tough stuff. So in we go with that. Copper slipped so that uh, if I had to withdraw it wouldn't be stuck in there. So uh, heater matrix in now for the heater box. It's time now to unbox our new old stock dash. Well, the dash that we spent the early parts of the videos building. And now it's time to uh, get it out of retirement or storage all ready to rock and there's the missing key I've been looking for that key exactly looking for that key okay so there we go all ready to rock this key I've been looking blooming everywhere for it okay all done Okay, flying on, continuing on, it's going great in the engine bay, I'll take you over there in a minute, uh, see what uh, we've got put in the engine bay, looms in, brake servos in, we'll take you over there. Um, in the meantime, just by building up, not buying, but building, the brake pipes for the engine bay, using the Ford Workshop book, we're looking for the front brake line first, this one here, just going to the uh, splitter bracket, the splitter manifold whatever you want to call that brake splitter giving that uh so hang on so we want uh right hand drive with servo so we're looking at pipe number 2a040 so going back for 2a040 we're going to get the length here now for this here we go for the length on that pipe then we're going to cut to length and we're, we're off Guys, just uh, carrying on with the build. We've got the dash in now, everybody. That was a bit of a hike. And we're just starting to fit the heater components into the dash now. So the rebuild's going good. Just let that camera focus. It will focus in a sec. Okay, we are building the dash up. Let me just check that we're, we're focusing all right. It's either that on my glasses. Dash is in, shoehorned in, crushed in, so we're carrying on doing the interior. Dash is next, but before we do the heater controls, here is uh, a heater controller that I've refurbished. Now, have a little look at this, how these work. You've got a contactor plate. See that black item in the middle of your screen? It's got brass contacts on. Those melt, and the brass contact recedes back into the plastic block. What I've done... I've just scalloped it out a little bit, then retension the wiper arm. Now the wiper arm's that copper bar you see in the centre. You've got to take off these little um, 
split rings by using uh, a pick, special pick tool to get them so you don't damage them. Those little one way washers pop off with a pick, you'll just catch the hooks on them. Then slide the bar out, watch out because there's a little ball bearing in it, just seated right in the middle of your screen. You can see the ball bearing hidden on that bottom lever. Catch the ball bearing, clean the ball bearing. And then bend the copper arm a little bit, just torsion it up a bit so it's getting good strong contact with those copper pads. And then clean the copper pads with very light emery paper. And then it should make a nice click position as the ball bearing lands in the little cutouts, the little scallops in the metal plate. The metal plate may be distorted. If it is, you just squeeze that so that lever slots nicely into those three positions, okay? And then it's a nice click action on it. You'll hear this one clicking as we go hold on let me just get a good position click there click there so it's very nice positive action with the copper pads cleaned up and a bit of tension added to that wiper arm and then the contact face is cleaned because you find that they can fail and your heaters never land in the right place and it's all going off you've got to unhook it all from the cable assembly so make a note how you unhook it from the cable assembly I've, I've marked this one up so that going in, before we finish off the dash and get the radio in, I've jumped straight to it here. We've also done a lot in the engine bay. The harness is in, the brake lines are in. We've been busy. Brake lines in. We've made some nice brake lines there. And some nice spacing clips, if you can see, just to keep it nice and neat. And then it goes underneath that lip. You can't even see it there. Then coming down to the unions there and on its way out to the back and to the front clip. So brake servo is on, master cylinder's on, I've leak tested it um, on the reservoir by bunging the reservoir up and I want the reservoir to pour uh, dot four all over me paintwork so I tested that off the car in the vice, just clamped in the vice so we've done the brake lines, they're all in and now we're just putting this back, I noticed when I was about to assemble it it wasn't, I've missed this off the refurb it was missed off so we're on to it, heater control panel just cleaned and greased and uh, giving positive action and good electrical contact for the heater otherwise your heater won't work it'll be sort of you have to woggle the you often have to woggle the the speed controller to get it to work and that's why these pads they wear down but you can just file them flat I found that one of those copper things you see there it's these two let me move the lever out of the way sorry for the camera work you'll see I've had to scallop out look because they were so far recessed, melted in. But the wiper drops into the scallop very smoothly, so we work and we get the ball bearing, parks it so it doesn't drift across. Okay, so we're going to refit that now to the car. Here we go. Moving on fast. Many hours on this so far. We're trying to get through it so that the car will power up off a power pack and then the battery. So heater control's back in. Bit fiddly this, got to get all the cables and clips back on, but I have marked them up. Heat control's refurb and going back in. You might see a 10mm bolt just at the back in the middle of the screen there now. You've got to get the nut and washer on that. That's connected to the dash. You push up on the dash and a little nut and washer there. And then the heater control has a slot at the back of the bracket. I don't think you can see it. Just in the middle again there and under that black sheathed cable there's a slot. That heads towards that nut and washer there and you slide it under then you've got to get a 10mm spanner in and tighten it up and that clamps everything together into the bulkhead the middle of the dash clamps to the bulkhead quite tricky with my extra cables as well i'm starting to compress some of the cables so i've got to push up on it it's quite tight in here but we're going to do it so heater controls going in these two phillips head screws now quite chunky ones drawing that heater control panel to the front you'll see those speakers there plenty of room so they've worked okay so we're in with that now we'll see that this lever's fixed I'll show you what I mean nice click 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 and you can pull quite easily out for the boost that's your fan boost when you pull it towards you so nice there and then good even smooth cable operation so that's good so we can now start looking at fitting the radio but we mustn't forget that there's a crash pad 10 mil or 8 mil head bolt I think here which if you put the radio in we won't be able to get to so we need to look at the crash pad next 
a late night drive back from the unit winter or autumn certainly on the way as you've been following the series throughout the uh, changes in the weather we saw the introduction of spring didn't we in this series we've seen winters and now it's uh, the autumn's coming and uh, the unit's temperatures beginning to drop I've got to get that car finished by November the 11th so we're flat out in 38 coming to an end I won't know exactly how much footage I've got left so I make this end piece for you so that I can use it if I have to once I start editing we hope you enjoy the little bits of trim and pieces and bits and bobs that are going back on the shell in 39 you're gonna see probably the shell completed so 38 saw the paint come back 39 sees the completed unit 40 sees the MOT that's the way it's uh, planned out guys so again we're thanking the new comments that are coming in and the new subscribers we're doing pretty well thanks for sticking with us sorry I sound a little bit tired it's been a, a 12 hour day on that uh, and work as well mixed all in together and now I crawl home and thank uh, the YouTube viewers there everyone that's on board Look forward to 39 uh, in a couple of weeks, in about two two weeks, because there'll be a lot of footage crammed in. So we shall update you then, and uh, we'll get out of here. It's over and out from Cortina City. We see you soon. Keep subscribing if you've not subscribed. Get on that button; it helps. Get on that uh, comment. Let me know what you think cars going together on target on plan we are booked in for vinyl roof next week 18th of September for vinyl roof and headlining that only leaves the dashboard to put in and then the interior front and rear screens then build the door cards doors up and the door cards all that stuff start coming together in October so October will see a lot of activity tapering off towards November the first week as we prepare for the NEC restoration uh, classic car show where we'll be on the Mark Free Cortina Owners Club stand if you haven't joined the Mark Free Club and you've got a Mark Free give it some thought because it's a great uh, site over and out for now Cortina City signing off enjoy next part 39 when it pops up it's over and out from me good night taking off now, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I'm taking off now, Alistair get to the beach, this is Peter, taking off now, 15 minutes we're going to be there, okay. Well, I only need to get to the end of it anyway. Okay, I'll let you know.